Okay, yesterday I was messing around and um, decided to try some little hydrangeas. And these are very easy with wafer paper. And it's made with a paper punch, so you can use any size flower. This is kind of a medium hydrangea shape. And you can either do them so that they're flat with the petals without any real kind of detail on them, or you can make them a little bit bent so that it looks like there's more of a curve to them. And I will show you how to do that. These are really, really easy and fast. But the one thing I will say is I'm not sure how these are going to hold up in humidity. The weather here is really humid, so if I was doing an outdoor reception and the bride wanted wafer paper flowers, I might try to talk her into gum paste. And I kind of look, I like how gum paste looks better anyway, because no matter what you do, you're not going to get a, a tremendously realistic looking flower, but I've seen some gum paste hydrangeas that are just amazing. But start with a little wire. This is a 32 gauge, so it's stiff. If you get wire and you cut it and it starts to unravel and the fabric comes off of it, that's not good because you want to be able to stick this right through the flower without having any kind of threads, you know, sticking out and preventing it from going through. So first just take it and just pinch the end a little bit. And I'll say here that I'm sure there are like 90 million ways to make these. This is just what I was doing yesterday. Okay, so now you have, you have like a little hook and it's bent. Okay, I'll start with a white one. This is the wafer paper that I punched out to make the flowers. So I'm taking a little extra piece of that and I'm just going to put some water on it and get it sticky. And I'm going to put this on the wire and just fold this over so that it totally covers the wire and it sticks to itself. It just makes a little bump and that's going to be the center of your hydrangea. And like I said, you can use this for daisies. You can use it for any kind of little small filler blossoms. Now you want this to be relatively wet, but not drippy. As I'm getting this wet, it's softening up and it's starting to be gluey. And that's kind of what you want. Now to make one that's flat like this, this one doesn't have a lot of detail on the petals. It's just a flat flower attached to that. You just take the cutout hydrangea, you're going to press the wire right through the center, and bring this down. And because this center is wet, see that's wet on there, that's going to stick right to the flower. Just press it there for a minute. And you can make these centers bigger or smaller. And just hold that there for a second. Look at that. It sticks to itself and you have a little flower. I know it's hard to see on the white. That is so easy. And then you just take this and stick it in styrofoam or hang it upside down or whatever to dry. Or you could leave it on the counter like that. Alright, I'm going to do one that's colored so you can see what happens with that. Alright, these are purple. I airbrush my wafer paper um, so it's not completely the same color. It's kind of tones on tones. So I'm going to do the same thing, start with the wire, bend it a little bit. Now with colored wafer paper, the food coloring is going to come off when you get it wet and it's going to get a little bit darker. And I didn't experiment with using a white center on colored flowers, but that might work because then maybe the um, food coloring from the flower might get on the center. It's the kind of thing you can play around with. And, you know, like I said, I just did a video about doing peonies with wafer paper. And there are probably a billion ways to do them. I'm just showing you how I was doing this yesterday. And I'm sure that I'll find 20 new ways to do it. It's not, it's not critical that you do it a certain way. So if you find something that works for you that's better, just go right ahead. All right, I'm going to stick this through, if I can get it. See, if you have little fibers coming off of the wire, it's going to prevent that from going through cleanly, and you don't want that. You want to just go through so you have a little tiny hole there, and it's not ripped. Just bring that straight down. And just wait till it sticks. It feels like it's sticking. 
and that is stuck to the flower. All right, so there's a little purple one. See how fast that is? All right, and now I will show you how to get the little curve to the petals. Like this one is colored. It has a little bit more of a curve to the petals. It's not as flat. Like this one is flat. This one has a little bit of a curve. And you can see there's a little color variation too because it is colored and when you get that wet it's going to get a little bit darker. So you have to decide whether you like that or not. You could make these in white and then dust them later. That's perfectly fine. If you try to make them in white and then do anything wet to them later it's going to curl the petals up. So that's fine if that's what you want, but um, if you don't want that then you don't want to do anything wet to them, just dust them. Alright, so I'm going to get my center ready. Okay, now when you do the curve on the petals, I've taken a, a paintbrush and marked it on here. You're going to take a little bit of water and mark exactly where that black is on there, just to get the center of the petal wet. I'll do this with the purple. If you do this with white, obviously it's not going to change the color, because it's the same. Um, it's, it, you know, it's not going to get darker if there's no food coloring on it. So I'm just brushing a tiny bit of water down the center of the petal. And you just leave it for a minute, and it softens up, and you can kind of bend it. Oops. So when that softens, and you can bend it, and you can bend it without the water, but it just makes it a little bit softer. Okay, so now that has a little bit of an edge, or a little bit of movement to it. It's not so flat. You can also take the water and just do it right around the tiny edge of it, but this is such a small flower, I wouldn't want to do that. It might just kind of dissolve the whole thing. All right, let me get a center. Have a little tiny piece. Like this. Wrap it around the center. Okay, so that's covered. I'm going to make this a little bit wetter just to make sure it's going to stick. Oops, don't drop your flowers. Okay, I'm going to insert this right in the middle. Press it till it sticks. And there you go. So this, this one has a little bit of a curve to the petals. It looks a little more natural than just having it be really flat. So um, that's one way to do it. And like I said, you know, see, it's, it is a little bit darker where I touch the water to the food coloring. And that will not lighten up, most likely. It's going to stay that color. So if you don't want that look, Use the white wafer paper first, use the uncolored, and then go back when this, these are all set up and dust them. And that'll give you the color and the, the shape without um, have the stripe on it, without having the darkened stripe. But you can see the difference. This one is flat. The petals here are flat, and this one has a little bit of curve to it. So it's a different look. It just depends on what you're going for. And again, I have not tested these outside in humidity, so I can't vouch for that. But these, uh, you know, that's just a really quick way to do them. And um, if you think of a different way, make a note, leave a comment, and uh, I'd be interested in it. It's, you know, there's, like I said, there's a million ways to do these things. Just make sure that when you put it down, see, I put this one down and it started bending. So when you're drawing these, stick them upright in just a block of styrofoam, or you can hang them upside down from a rack, just so that the flower isn't bending like this because you don't want that to happen when it dries. All right, so that's it. If you have any questions, post them in the comments, and I will get back to you as soon as I can.